Joining me now on Skype is Adam White, resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and law professor at the Antonin Scalia Law School. Adam, welcome back. Always good to see you. So help us put today in perspective its historical significance and its significance to this year's presidential election. Well, this is the milestone in the constitutional process for electing the president. Uh, the voting by the by the states uh, with respect to the Electoral College puts an end to the process of counting votes in, votes in the state and begins the process of concluding the election in Congress, where the votes will be counted. Adam, what does today's Electoral College vote, what does it mean for President Trump's legal efforts, and could they still have an impact at this point? Well, this puts a final end to any prospect of litigating the counting of popular votes in the individual states. This now turns to Congress, where the House and the Senate would carry out the normally pro forma duty of just counting the votes, which we already know have been counted in the individual states. The, I'm sorry, counting the electoral votes. Now, it's possible that this could be uh, challenged in Congress if there's an objection from a member of the House and a member of the Senate. It would be extraordinary if this actually changed the outcome of the election. But from here on out, Congress really is in control. What happens next will not be decided in the courts. And as you know, Congress meets January 6th to count and to certify the electoral votes. Um, is it possible the vote count could be contested at that time? And what do you think that process would look like? Given the politics surrounding the, the election and the aftermath of the election, it seems inevitable that there will be a member of the House and the member of the Senate willing to contest some of the electoral votes that have been submitted. At that point, the joint session of Congress would resolve down into the two individual houses, the House and the Senate, where each would deliberate upon the objection to the votes. There's really no formal constitutional process for reconsidering electoral votes that have been sent to uh, Washington from the states. It will be an extraordinary process. I think the, the likelihood of anything other than the election of Joe Biden is at this point minuscule, uh, but we can't count out the possibility of somebody trying a last ditch effort to challenge this in Congress. It'll be fascinating to see it all play out with the sitting vice president, uh, Michael Pence, serving as the president of the Senate, much like uh, then Vice President Al Gore presided over this in the aftermath of the 2000 election. Yeah, it will be pretty interesting indeed. Uh, what else are you watching, Adam, and what should we be looking for? Well, at this point, I think everybody is watching to see which member of the House and which of the Senate will try to be the one to lodge the inevitable objection uh, contesting uh, Vice President, or former Vice President Biden's victory uh, in the states. And we'll see what, goes, what happens from there. But it really is open-ended at this point. Normally, again, this is just a pro forma process. And whatever happens will almost surely be an extraordinary departure from that tradition. Absolutely. Well, Adam, we really appreciate your time today. Adam White, resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and law professor at the Antonin Scalia Law School. Thank you again for your insights. Thank you.